Please be seated. Deputy Lieutenant, councillors, ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Charmwood Borough Council Annual General Meeting. And I would like to now run through some housekeeping arrangements. Please note that this meeting is being filmed and recordings will be made available on the council's website and YouTube following the meeting. Under the openness of local government bodies regulations, people may film, record, tweet or blog this meeting and this is outside the council's control. I would also like to remind councillors and the other people attending the meeting that the fire exits are to the rear and side of the room. There are no fire alarm tests planned for this evening. Could I also ask that everyone turns off their mobile phones or switches them to silent so that the meeting isn't disturbed? <clears throat> I would also like to remind councillors that when they speak, they are required to stand, if they are able to do so, to address the meeting. This is a requirement of our constitution. At today's meeting, most pe uh, speakers will be speaking from the lectern in front of the dais. So the first item on the agenda is apologies for absence. I have had apologies from the following councillors. I think Councillor Fox, I don't think, She's now here, so there's no apologies from Councillor Fox. It's Councillor Knight and Councillor Woodward, Councillor Rattray and Councillor Haynes. I have also had apologies from the following honorary aldermen, Alderman Bush, Tomey, Stott and Shields. Are there any other apologies? So I would now like to ask my chaplain, Canon Paul Chipchase, to say a few words. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Good evening, everybody. I'm sure you're all aware that this year is the 50th anniversary of the reorganization of local government that happened on the 1st of April, 1974. I started work as a local government officer that same year, just a few months after the reorganisation. And of course this means that this year is also the 50th anniversary of Charnwood Borough Council and there is a display in Loughborough Library celebrating the 50 years that this council has been in existence. There is indeed much to celebrate. But I find myself thinking what to me have been the most significant changes in local government in those 50 years. And two come to mind. The first is that I think today the profile of elected members is much higher than it was when I worked in local government all those years ago. Frankly, back in 1974, the last thing any of us officers wanted to do was to put an elected member in front of the cameras or on local radio. Fortunately that's changed and if there is anything to report or to celebrate about local government it's usually an elected member or portfolio holder who fronts that up. And I'm sure that's a gain for local democracy. The other major change I think has been the arrival of elected mayors. And as you know, Leicestershire has chosen, at least for the moment, not to go down that particular avenue. And I certainly don't want to get involved in the politics and the pros and cons of that. But what I do think is there is something special, something to be cherished about the type of mayor we have in Charnwood. One who steps back from politics for a year to act as first citizen, to be a focus for inclusion, to be one who celebrates and affirms and publicizes all the things that are good.
about Charnwood. And in that regard, although I'm biased as the mayor's chaplain, I have been enormously impressed at the year of office of our outgoing mayor, Margaret, about the energy, the enthusiasm, the wit, the humour, the humility she has brought to this role. It has gone a long way to suggest, to me at least, that 50 years on, things are well in local government, at least in this local authority. So as we begin our meeting this evening, perhaps we could offer a prayer of thanks for Margaret's service and ministry as the Charnwood Mayor, and a prayer of hope that Julie and all those who succeed will maintain the standards, the energy, the joy, and all the things that are good about what we have witnessed this last year. And we ask these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. We now move on to item two, the appointment of mayor. I call on Councillor Beverly Gray to move the appointment of a mayor of the borough of Charmwood for 2024-25. She's coming to the lectern, isn't she? If you'd like to come to the lectern, Councillor Gray. Deputy Lieutenant, Honorary Freeman, Honorary Alderman, Past Mayors, Councillors and Honoured Guests, I move that Councillor Bradshaw be elected Mayor of the Borough of Charnwood for the 2024-25 Council year and until her successor becomes entitled to act as Mayor. I first met Councillor Julie Bradshaw when I was elected in 2022. And for me, meeting her and having the opportunity to work alongside her in the Labour Group was, and still is, a huge honour. Because in sporting circles, her name precedes her. Julie Bradshaw, the woman who has not just one world record to her name, but so many, I actually gave up counting when I looked them up. Julie Bradshaw, who first swam the English Channel at the age of 15, who revisited this incredible feat in 2002, but decided swimming the entire channel was not enough of a challenge, really. So she gained another world record for this time, swimming the channel doing butterfly in 14 hours and 18 minutes. For any swimmers sitting here tonight, butterfly is the most technically demanding stroke. I personally wouldn't even manage it in a swimming pool. Um, so to imagine using it to swim the entire channel is something I can barely comprehend. Well, actually, let's be honest here. Swimming the channel at all is something I can barely begin to comprehend, let alone most of Julie's other sporting achievements. The word phenomenal doesn't begin to cover them. I could regale you with them all, but we really don't have enough time. There's the world record she gained for swimming the length of Lakes Windermere, 10.5 miles, Coniston, 5.25 miles, and Ullswater, 7.75 miles, all in one day, and being the first woman to do it. The fact that she became the fastest female to swim butterfly around the 28.5 miles of Manhattan Island in 2011, the relay world record she gained most recently in 2014 for swimming as part of a 10-way relay team in Windermere. The longest swim she's done 
being a solo four-way Windermere, 42 miles, in just over 23 hours. Um, and the water temperature on all her swims has only been around 12 degrees and sometimes less. So, what I really wanted to know when I first spoke to Julie was what motivated her to do all this? How on earth did she manage it? What goes through your head when you're swimming the English Channel with no wetsuit on your own, apart from the jellyfish, which incidentally, Julie admits she's always been terrified of. Julie's response was, as I've learned after a while of knowing her, typically matter of fact. She just put her mind to it. She got on with it. She focused on what she was doing and didn't let her fear hold her back. And I think, actually, there's something else. Julie is a person who prides herself on doing what other people dismiss as being impossible. The bigger the challenge, the greater the barrier, the more single-minded and determined Julie becomes. She's always wanted to prove, as she explained to me, that a normal person can do infinitely extraordinary things. Unsurprisingly, Julie has received a huge number of accolades for her sporting successes. The most notable being an MBE in 2006. I know that Julie is rightly tremendously proud of this honour. But I also know that she's not naturally someone who craves the limelight. In fact, she describes herself as actually quite shy, happiest being quiet at home with her beloved rescue dogs. However, Julie has always been determined to use her sporting achievements to help others, whether that be through using her swimming to raise money for charity or coaching others to help them believe that they're capable of far more than they may have ever dreamed possible. Indeed, her MBE was for services to swimming and to charity. So what I didn't know about Julie Bradshaw when I first met her was that in addition to being a world record holding swimmer, she trained as a teacher, completing her PGCE in Loughborough in 1983. She's lectured at both Loughborough College and Loughborough University. She ran the London Marathon to raise money for charity. She runs her own counselling and life coaching business dedicated to helping other people fulfil their potential. And, of course, something I wasn't aware of until I was elected, she became a borough councillor in 2011, making her one of the longest serving Labour councillors of our current group. Not a bad list, considering she's achieved all this while still continuing to train at a high level in her swimming. Now let's not forget, her last world record was as recent as 2014. So, how has she managed all of these things? My answer is to say that we must remember what I've already explained in my speech. Julie is a person who sees a barrier and then smashes right through it. And it is this single-minded determination that she has brought to her role as a borough councillor and that she's used to good effect to achieve the best possible outcomes for residents in her ward. Julie was motivated to become a councillor out of frustration with parking issues in her local area. A frustration many of us share, but in typical Julie fashion, 
she was not content simply to complain about it. She felt it was her job to try to do something about it. Well, on that count, I have to say, she's still trying. Parking being rather a thorny issue, as I'm now discovering for myself. But she's earned tremendous popularity amongst her residents, and she's achieved some notable successes, not least a 12-month campaign to improve the accessibility of a local shopping centre by having a permanent ramp installed. Julie has brought the commitment, drive and resilience demonstrated in her swimming to bear on her work as a borough councillor and to serve the residents of Ashby Ward, a community she loves. It is this commitment to serve, this determination and energy that I know Julie will bring to her role as mayor. It is an honour that she's worked hard for, one that means a great deal to her, and once again, one that she intends to use to show that ordinary people are capable of doing extraordinary things. Julie will combine her mayoral duties with working and managing her own business, and in doing so, will help to inspire people to feel that politics, that civic office, is within the grasp of ordinary working folk. Julie will seek to break down barriers, just as she's been doing her whole life in the sporting arena. I look forward to celebrating Councillor Julie Bradshaw's achievements as Mayor of Charnwood in the years to come. I know that there will be many. I call on Councillor Boker to second the motion. Deputy Lieutenant Manor, Madam Mayor, Honorary Freeman, Honorary Alderman, past mayors, councillors and honoured guests, I second the motion that Councillor Dr Julie Bradshaw, MBE, be elected Mayor of the Borough of Charnwood for the year 2024-25 and until her successor becomes entitled to act as Mayor. I'm very pleased to second this motion for uh, Julie um, to be our new mayor for 24-25. Whilst I do know, not know Julie very well, I've got to know her very quickly over the weekend. And I, <laughs> <laughs> and ha I have her notes here. Um, and, but what I do know about Julie is that I find her very kind, considerate and professional as a person. Um, I don't want to repeat everything that's already been said, but um, you may not know that Julie was born in Blackpool, Lancashire, and moved to Loughborough University in 1983, where she studied for her undergraduate degrees and as well as a MSc. She has been a resident of Loughborough ever since then, so for over 40 years. As you've heard from Councillor Gray, Julie has achieved much through her sport and in particularly swimming. I was astounded when I read about her and that she had achieved over 20 world records for marathon swimming and has since used her skills to raise thousands for charity over the years, ever since she was 15. And as you've also heard, in recognition of that, in 2006, Julie was awarded an MBE 
for services to swimming in charity. And also in the same year, which I don't think Councillor Gray mentioned, received an honorary doctorate from Loughborough University. The other interesting thing on her website is Julie is nicknamed Mad Fish, which I felt found fascinating <laughs> after 40 years in the sport. Um, as you've also heard, Judy, Julie has achieved much for her residence in Loughborough Ashby Ward, which she has served for 13 years. As well as the improved access to the shops, uh, Julie has fought hard for all the young people in her ward and eventually getting a skate park and other leisure facilities. Julie has been honoured from many associations and received many accolades. For example, uh, she was nominated uh, from hundreds of people for the Sunday Times Inspiration Award in 2004 and in 2007 was inducted into the International Marathon Hall Swimming of Fame in America. These are all excellent and amazing achievements and I, uh, as Councillor Gray said, I was particularly impressed that she swam the English Channel when she was aged just 15. Um, as you have also heard, Julie currently runs her own business, uh, a little advert here, Get Set for Success, where she inspires, motivates and enables people to achieve what they want and need in life through her role as a psychotherapist, life coach and mindset coach and as a mot motivational speaker. I've already booked my appointment for next week. <laughs> as her website says, Julie has worked hard all her life and despite its ups and downs has achieved so much, it's almost unbelievable. She has an amazing business where she helps other people to also achieve success and happiness. And as her website quotes, climb high, climb far. Your goal is the sky, your aim is the star. Julie, in my opinion, is clearly, and she told me to keep this short, Julie is clearly, in my opinion, a very deserving nomination for Mayor of Charmwood, and I am very, very happy to second this, uh, this motion. I now put this motion to the meeting. Could I see all those in favour? I think that is unanimous. Congratulations, Councillor Dr. Julie Bradshaw, MBE. I invite you to formally accept your election and sign your declaration of acceptance of office. Councillor Dr. Julie Bradshaw, MBB, MBE, having been elected to the office of Mayor, hereby declare that you take that office upon yourself and will duly and faithfully fulfil the duties of it according to the best of your judgment and ability. I do. Congratulations. Thank you. Can I ask you to sign the uh, declaration, please? So your name at the top there, signed and dated. Thank <laughs> you. 
Deputy Lieutenant Henri Freeman, Henri Alderman, past mayors, councillors and honoured guests. It is with great pride that I stand here speaking to you all tonight. There have been some magical moments in my life, including receiving my MBE from Prince Charles, now our King. Yet I cannot express just how privileged I feel to become the next Mayor of Charnwood. It is indeed truly humbling and I must thank you all. Never did I think that when I first got elected as a Charnwood Borough Councillor back in 2011, that 13 years later, I would be the 51st Mayor of Charnwood. There doesn't seem too much that I can add to the kind words from Councillor Beverly Gray and Councillor Jenny Boker. I'm sure that swimming will feature in my mayoral year when it comes to charity raising, so please have your costumes at the ready. <laughs> It won't be an English channel or other open, swim, open water swim. You'll be actually very relieved to hear. I must also give a huge thank you to the outgoing Mayor, Councillor Margaret Svinovich, as it has been an absolute humbling experience supporting her in her role and to attending events with her. You've done an amazing job and it has been an inspirational thing for me to follow. In my life, I have always loved to inspire, motivate and enable. And this has been a constant theme of mine growing up and into my adult life. While she can't be here with me physically tonight, I have to thank immensely my mum and her mum, without whom I could not have been where I am today. She encouraged me to go to university here in Loughborough. So that's why nearly 40 years ago, I came to Loughborough to do my degrees and I've lived here ever since. It was my nan that passed on her swimming ability to me as she herself was a champion swimmer when younger. Thank you so much both of you from the bottom of my heart. And to all my family of friends, you know who you are. And once again, you all continue to be such a huge support to me. This moves me nicely onto the theme for my mayoral year and one that is so important in life. It fits in with the inspiration and motivation that I love to impart to others and builds on what Councillor Smidovich has done during her, her year. My theme for my mayoral year is about believing in yourself. Therefore, I shall leave you all with this tonight. If you think you can, you can. If you think you can't, you can't. Either way, you'll prove yourself right. So follow your dreams and believe in yourself. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, there will now be a short adjournment.
Please be seated. Item three is a vote of thanks to the retiring mayor. I call on Councillor Baines to propose the vote of thanks. Madam Mayor, I move that this council tenders to Council Margaret Smilovitz its thanks for the service she has provided as Mayor of the Borough of Charnwood and the, for the way in which she has presided over the council's business during the past council year. The council records its gratitude for the manner in which she has maintained the position of the mayoralty and the work she has, has done in meeting so many people in the borough throughout the year. The council also extends its thanks to Tim Baum for his service as the mayor's consort and for the help and support he has provided to the mayor and for the considerate and committed way in which he has undertaken his role. The council assures both Councillor Smidovitz and Tim Baum that they have the best wishes of its members, of all of its members, for their future health and well-being. Well, what can I say about Councillor Smidovitz's year as mayor, a year in which the borough turned 50? It's worth summarising what she's done in quantity before we start to talk about the quality of what she's been up to. In quantity, she's presided over 288 events this year and raised around £5,200 in almost equal amounts for a very worthy charities, and those are the Head and Neck Cancer Foundation and Men and Women in Sheds. Over 288 events, she's opened up businesses, attended award ceremonies, been at the proms, attended events in support of and solidarity for our Ukrainian friends, drawn raffles, been to schools, opened businesses, opened exhibitions, attended Diwali celebrations, turned on the Christmas lights and attended many board meetings, among a whole host of other things that I'm sure uh, we'll outline tonight. In quality, it's been an eventful year, and I shall focus on the funnier highlights. Our retiring mayor could never be accused of being flagrant, but she has been accused of being fragrant. In fact, on three separate occasions, she's been told just how good she smells. I presume this is her perfume rather than her body odour, but she won't spill the beans about just which perfume she wears. Her secret's locked in tighter than Colonel Sanders' spice and herb fried chicken recipe. That said, I'm not entirely sure how one plucks up the courage to say anything about how a mayor smells. Surely the change should strike the fear of God into most people, but that's been Margaret's great quality as mayor, being accessible and approachable. I'll return to this theme a little bit later on as it is recurrent. I suspect also that perhaps Margaret's smell is just so good that it overcomes people's tendency to be polite. They're just so overcome with pleasure that they have to comment. Of the three people who, were told, Margaret, who told Margaret that uh, they were having a veritable olfactory party was a little girl at an event in Syston whose mum looked horrified after she blurted out her aromatic praise. At an installation event for a defibrillator, whilst cutting the ribbon and amongst electricians, who Margaret quipped were real bright sparks, a voice boomed in the hushed silence, Boy, do you smell good! The mayor, quick as a flash, and a widow, I hasten to add, asked him if he was married. Too much laughter. And the third smeller was a chap at the felon's dinner, who Margaret introduced herself to, and who instead of introducing himself just said, you smell lovely. And entranced, completely forgot to tell Margaret his name. So aside from smelling good, Margaret's been a doer this year. At a civic service, she prepared the service herself, including selecting the music, organizing the choir, and selecting the hymns. She even managed to get the Bishop of Nottingham uh, to, to come along, um, despite his usual requirement of a significant amount of notice. During her year, her retiring, our retiring mayor attended parts of the borough that others haven't reached, 
the Heineken mare, we can call her. For instance, she went up the many steps to the top of the Grade 2 listed Carillon Tower for its 100th birthday with the Loughborough University VC and his wife and the Lord Lieutenant and numerous other guests. Being an ex-academic herself, she particularly enjoyed the graduation events at, Univer at Loughborough University and enjoyed, enjoyed meeting the many and various academics and hearing about their work. But Margaret's events have not all gone smoothly. At one dinner, within the last 10 minutes at the end of the event, she knocked over her own glass of wine, spilling it everywhere. At the end, retiring to her trusty chauffeur and civic officer, Carol, she'd mentioned that she'd knocked over the wine. And Carol said, yeah, I know, I've already heard. So news certainly travels fast and nothing is private in a mayor's public life. At another event in the marketplace, and despite being chained up, I mean with chains, not in chains, an elderly gentleman took Margaret by the hand and told her that he was delighted, absolutely delighted, that she was human. And then catching how daft that sounded, told her that she was very normal. And Margaret laughed, took it all in a stride, and with the positivity with which it had been delivered. Margaret also entertained dignitaries from Gem Bleu in France and Zamosh in Poland in the Mayor's Parlour, with whom Loughborough's twinned, of course, but sadly was unable to join the trip over from uh, Loughborough with their councillors Tillotson and Forrest because she'd broken her foot. She did, however, get the men and women in Shed's charity who sell their woodwork products to generate income to make up a fancy plaque and the hosts were very pleased with the thoughtful gift. Her year was topped off by a visit to Buckingham Palace Garden Party where she was delighted to shake hands with the Queen and speak to Princess Anne whom she'd previously met at the Sense Hub at Loughborough College this year. All in all, our retiring mayor had a very interesting year, and while she clearly thoroughly enjoyed herself meeting so many wonderful people, doing so much good for the life and soul of the borough, I have no doubt that the civic life of the borough was also enhanced with her presence, wit, charm, and of course, fabulous pong. Councillor Smidovitz, Thank you for all you have done as first citizen of the borough and for the people of Charnwood in your mayoral year. And thanks also for herding us councillor cats so well in our meetings at council. I call on councillor Hamilton to second the motion. Madam Mayor, I second the motion. Uh, Councillor Baines has mentioned many of the highlights of Councillor Smidovitz's year as mayor. Uh, I know from my communications with the retiring mayor that it's been hard to narrow down the choice of what events to talk about, as she informed me that she really enjoyed everything that she was involved in. I know that she did particularly enjoy reconnecting with her childhood tomboy persona and getting to drive a steam engine on the Great Central Railway and pulling part of a pint at the Loughborough Beer Festival which she opened, which of course meant her having to sample some beers purely in her capacity as the judge. Um, there were lots of more fun duties for the Mayor such as attending Bristol's Proms in the Park, presenting trophies for the Thurkestin and Crops and Gardeners Club Awards, the Tenant Garden Competition and the Sison Food Festival. And I had the pleasure of joining the mayor in judging the best dressed Christmas tree competition for our sheltered housing schemes. As a retiring mayor, and I discovered the residents take this competition very seriously with beautifully decorated trees, but also manger scenes, Christmas grottos, and even a real life Father Christmas in one place and an animatronic Father Christmas flying over our heads on a zip wire in another. Uh, the residents were certainly very creative. Among the 288 engagements that our retiring mayor carried out, there were the more civic duties, such as greeting our twin town visitors from Jambleu and Zamosht, supporting the armed forces at Armed Forces Day events, uh, at festivals of remembrance, and of course, the 100th anniversary service for the Carolyn Tower, uh, and the Rainbow's Open Day celebrating 30 years of them being open. Councillor Smidowitz 
I was also involved in events recognising the achievements of people within Charnwood, such as the Community Heroes Award and the unveiling of the memorial bench in Queen's Park commemorating Marion Smith, who was so important to Loughborough and Bloom and who had also given of her time as a borough councillor. There was also the farewell service for the Reverend Wemby Dalrymple, a well-known face around Loughborough who left for bigger and better things uh, to serve at Canterbury Cathedral. Uh, and the celebration of young people's achievements through the Prince's Trust Awards. All in all, our retiring mayor has had a very packed year. I must add that this was done whilst demonstrating considerable fortitude as she carried on with her engagements for part of the year with the Broken Foot. As I said at the beginning, I know that it has been difficult for Councillor Smidowitz to select her highlights as she has enjoyed everything that she's been involved in. I also know Councillor Smidowitz recognises the importance of the role of mayor, a role that isn't simply a ceremonial figurehead. Our retiring mayor has met many people, helping them make connections and helped instigate various useful links between different groups that can now help each other. Councillor Smidowitz has demonstrated that the mayor is a facilitator, a focus of civic pride, a maintainer of tradition and an essential part of the civic life of Charnwood. Madam Mayor, I am happy to second the motion. I now put this motion to the meeting. Could I see those, all those in favour? I see that's unanimous. So that's... I call on Margaret Smidovich now to reply to the vote of thanks. Deputy Lieutenant, Madam Mayor, Honorary Freeman, Honorary Alderman, past mayors, councillors and honoured guests. We were notified that there was no time limit on our speeches tonight, so please feel free to place your bets on how long I'm going to be and what time I'll finish. Uh, I'll try and make it under an hour. But I look back and I have to say to myself, was it really a year ago? when I added yet another defining moment in my life and became the 50th mayor, a privilege I did not take lightly, as the new king and the Carolean era had begun. The king at the time emphasised what was important to him, values, community and volunteers. I committed to that sentiment and its people that makes things happen, as I've constantly mentioned. But the sheer number of our residents that can do and commit to doing for, th for people in the borough, for others, is, has been both, both humbling and a real eye-opener to become involved with. During International Women's Week, I was asked to give several presentations and link, to, and link this to my life and role as a mayor. I had not appreciated how important the mini biography sent out prior to our visits would be scrutinised. Marrying up with the international aspect was a challenge. I had an outline of our civic history and needed a few facts and figures in case I was asked for more detail, and I was. I won't ask you to put your hands up if you know the answers, but I discovered that between 1888 and 2023, there were 110 mayors. I was the 110th, but also the 50th mayor of the borough. But between 1947 and 1956, there were two Madam Mayors, and from 1974, there have been 14 but eight of them since 2010. So we are evidently now moving with the times. We learn by doing, 
and our civic presentation roadshow was adapted appropriately to all sorts of groups. Brownies and beaver groups, international students, Asian communities, care staff from Kerala and the Philippines, ESOL groups, Sabi Ladies Fellowship, and a packed audience of nuns, priests, and visitors gathered at the Rosmini Center on the A46. Somehow, we managed to bring humor into our performances whilst explaining the various protocols of civic life, usually at my expense, I have to add, with me holding up my hand and saying about the bruising that results if I am seen touching the mayoral car handle and similar stories which result in mayors being replaceable, but the chain isn't. The beavers focused on the mace and wondered if the small dent in it was because it had been used as a weapon when protecting the mayor. I said, more likely, it was used on the mayor. We are definitely a competitive borough. Our residents love to have a cause to celebrate. I did not expect to be one of the four judges at the best ale competition. Incidentally, it was Tint Abbey from Mount St. Bernard's that was chosen by all four of us on a blind testing, tasting. I might actually forego the gin now. The Christmas tree judging as that's been mentioned at eight sheltered housing uh, um, homes was highly competitive but great fun with the flying Santas on wires and Santa sitting in unexpected places. The tenant's garden parties is a real community event. But a moment that I had that I'll never forget was at the last party, a little boy of about eight years old with thick glasses, with a smaller lad in tow, came up to me and he asked, are you an important person? I said, well, yes, when I'm wearing this chain. He said, I have something I want to give you. Please open your hand. To be honest, I thought he was going to drop a worm or a snail into my palm, as has happened once with a nephew of mine. But I bravely held out my hand and he dropped a piece of broken necklace about an inch long with imitation diamonds. He thought they were real. I said, don't you like it? Yes, he said, it's lovely, but I want you to have it. I treasure that gift and I would love to have met his mother. At another event on time banking, I was watching the pyrography demonstration on a round slice of tree trunk with a tree branch traced on it. I was encouraged to use the equipment whilst chatting to the volunteer expert. The result was an invitation to the open day at the repair shop in Mount Sorrel. It was advertised and well attended. And as I was leaving the, the event, I was presented with an unexpected gift that I had to open then and there. It was a piece of wood I'd been practicing on and the branch had now been completed and my house number added. It has pride of place at my house and I have bought a pyrography set because I know what I'm going to be doing in the next few weeks. But all gifts are duly recorded by the council. We don't get away with anything. So I have learned to expect the unexpected, turning up at events, expecting to find 15 or so in the group and finding over 80, and that was at the walking group. I was invited back, but I did tell them I was literally gobsmacked. So, and then 74 turned up at the rehabilitation center when I was invited to give a talk on self-esteem and becoming mayor. So Carol said to me at the end of that event, uh, your hand was shaking. And I said, well, I hope the rest of me didn't show because I was literally daunted by I saw 74 um, of the chaps at different stages of rehabilitation, including some that I had sent down in the past. But it was great to see them fully recovered and not regretting anything. So from planting trees, enjoying the fun of the fair, 
and the showman's gift of the myrtle, the turtle, I will never forget. And it was auctioned at my mayor's dinner for £70. So together with the varied events of the Great Central Ra Railway, but my family gasped when they saw a photograph of me driving a train. I will now eventually own up that it was only for a few yards. The applause at my, co co at my civic service really took me by surprise. Uh, meeting the Princess Royal and shaking the Queen's hand has been a lovely finish to my year. So Gar Carol's abiding memory of me is savouring a jam donut she saved for us on the journey home from London. Evidently, my face looked like sheer bliss. So there are many people to thank for their support. Carol, our civic officer, I couldn't do the, have done the job without you. My consort and, and Canon Paul, my chaplain, our democratic services team, officers in Charmwood, family, friends, and Councillor Hamilton and Councillor Baines for their speaking parts. And of course, Councillor Bradshaw, who has been supportive throughout. Julie, I wish you and Councillor Northage all the best, every success and the best of times. The residents of our borough have shown and told me how much they value our visits and ceremonial events. I know you will enjoy the year ahead. And thank you all for coming tonight. She's done what you did last year, didn't she? She ran off. Madam Mayor, could I ask you to come down and join us? Mr. Smidowitz, would you like to come back up, please? Could you present the past mayor's badge, please? Tim, could you come up, please? Could you present the past consort's badge, please? I will now move on to item four, appointment of Deputy Mayor. I call on Councillor Sandy Forrest to move the appointment of a Deputy Mayor of the Borough of Charnwood for 2024-25. I now put this motion to the meeting. Could I see all those in favour? Unanimous. So, congratulations, Councillor David Northage. Please step forward to sign your declaration of office, acceptance of office, please. Thank you.
The next item is item five, disclosure of pecuniary interests and other registrable and non-registrable interests. I call on the Chief Executive to report on disclosures of interests in the business to be considered at the meeting which have been made by councillors. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I have had no disclosures of interest. Members of the Council, please indicate whether you have any other interests to disclose in any item of business to be considered at the meeting. The next item is item six, the minutes. I move that the minutes of the Council meeting held on the 22nd of April 2024 be confirmed and signed. Madam Mayor, I second that motion. Could I see all those in favour? It's unanimous again. Item 7, political balance and appointment to committees for 2024-25, the agenda supplement. An agenda supplement setting out the background to appointments to committees and the political balance calculations. The nominations for committees and proposals for chairs and vice chairs can be found in the supplementary reports. I call on Councillor Mayor to propose the motion. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Firstly, let me congratulate you on uh, becoming the Mayor of, of Charwood. Um, I look forward to having a fantastic year and visiting um, many events in Loughborough East. Uh, Madam Mayor, I move the recommendations and reasons one to four as set out on the supplementary agenda pack to be approved. Madam Mayor, I second the motion. Okay. Does any council wish to speak? Okay, so <coughs> I'll, I'll call on I'll call on to Councillor Mayor to sum up. Oh, so yeah, I call on Councillor Mayor to sum up. So could I see all those in favour? Unanimous again. So the final item on the agenda is item eight, announcements. I've got one announcement tonight. I'd just like to welcome our new councillor, Louise Taylor Durant. Uh, con many congratulations. I call on the leader to make his announcements. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I wish to confirm the new cabinet membership for 2024-25, um, and I also want to wish Cap uh, Councillor Beverly Gray uh, to the portfolio of uh, Climate Action and Net Zero. Thank you. I call on the Chief Executive to make his announcements. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I have no announcements to make. So we move on now to close of business. So just thank you for all for attending and I look forward to seeing you downstairs in the sock gallery. So I close the meeting now. Thank you.
As you know, Charlwood is home to many wonderful people and we have such a fantastic community spirit here. In the past couple of months, we have been celebrating everything that makes the borough such a wonderful place, from its open spaces and geological history to its towns, centres and villages. There are some events coming up that will celebrate this more. So, for instance, the 50th exhibition that's currently running at Loughborough Library. I encourage you all to go and see it and I'm sure all the events will be brilliantly received and well attended by residents from all over Charmwood. It will be an honour and a privilege to serve as Mayor of Charmwood during this prestigious and important time in the borough's history. Deputy Lieutenant, ladies and gentlemen, would you please raise your glass in a toast to the borough of Charmwood. <laughs> Silence for the worshipful, the Mayor of Charwood, Councillor Dr. Julie Bradshaw, MBE. So, as, as I said before, I'd just like to thank you all for coming to my friends and councillors, honoured guests, Deputy Lieutenant. It's been a wonderful evening so far, and I hope you all enjoy the food down here, the drinks, and nice, short, and sweet. Keep having fun, and I look forward to talking to you all very soon. Thank you. Deputy Lieutenant, ladies and gentlemen, may I, may I call upon representatives of the Mayor's Charities. First of all, I'd like to ask Living Without Abuse representatives come and say a few words. Emily? Marvellous. Coming from the top round the back. Emily and I'm head of fundraising uh, at the charity Living Without Abuse and first of all I wanted to say thank you very much for um, inviting me today and thank you so much Julie for choosing us as one of your charities for this year. We are absolutely thrilled and delighted. Living Without Abuse is a local charity. Um, we support victims of domestic abuse and or sexual violence in Leicester City, Leicestershire and Rutland and Unfortunately and unnecessarily, there are, um, many of our clients are in the borough of Charmwood. Each year we support between 7,000 and 9,000 adults and children. Um, they are, uh, uh, regardless of age, gender, uh, sexuality, race or religion, the such charity supports um, people, um, whatever their, their um, origin, and uh, we support them in their time of need. Um, one in four women and one in six men will experience domestic abuse in their lifetime. That means that there is, without doubt, several people within the audience today who are going through the trauma of domestic abuse. And I can assure you that every single one of you in this room knows somebody, even if you don't know it, um, whether it be a family member, a friend or a colleague who is going through the trauma of domestic abuse, which has far-reaching consequences and um, through our services, uh, we provide counselling, we provide group support, we su provide practical outreach support to our many, many clients in need. And um, I am absolutely thrilled that we're going to be supported this year. I myself am a survivor of domestic abuse and I can wholeheartedly say, do not underestimate the significance of support that these organisations give. Um, Without doubt, I would not be standing here in front of you today if it wasn't for the support I'd received from a very similar organisation during my darkest two years. So I am so pleased that I'll be working with Julie um, to make such a difference in the lives of local people. And um, we've already been chatting through some um, early ideas. We're meeting this Friday to uh, flesh these out. and. Without doubt, with her enthusiasm and drive and with the support of people like you, I think this is going to be a record-breaking fundraising year. So thank you very much. Thank you. And do we have representatives of Dogs Trust Loughborough, please? Yes.
Hi everybody, uh, lovely to meet you this evening. My name's Megan, I'm the representative for Dogs Trust Loughborough. Um, I've been absolutely fascinated by everything that's been happening here tonight and I'm so grateful that Julie's invited me. After learning about her swimming career and her passion towards charities, I felt very, very honoured that she was going to take part and support me in my journey with Dogs Trust. Uh, hopefully we do have some dog lovers in the house this evening. I know Julie's a big one, I do see a hand at the back, um, which is lovely. And the work we do at Dog Stress is obviously very varied. We are known most for, first and foremost as a rehoming centre, but we do a lot of other educational and community events that basically support young people and their dogs and their owners, as well as uh, supporting children with how to look after their dogs in the home and coaching people throughout their rehoming and rehabilitation of our dogs. Uh, a lot of us know that dogs that are coming to rescue can be a little more troubled um, than the puppies that you see around and about in the area, but we love them all exactly the same. And hopefully our four-legged friends sort of get us through life, even when toughs are really bad and times are difficult. So thank you again for everybody for listening, and I'm hoping I will also be at the meeting on Friday to flesh out some uh, fun wagon ideas with Julie and uh, our LMA representative. So thank you very much, and yeah, thanks for listening.